Hello everybody, welcome back to the next episode in the series. Thanks for tuning in. In the last episode we went ahead and fixed the issue that we were having, the runtime issue that we were having as far as trying to reference the database on the main thread. Uh, we did so by introducing a very a simple approach to multi-threading uh, through the Kotlin coroutines. If you missed any of that, feel free to uh, go back to the last episode and get caught up. Um, in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and implement our UI layer a little bit here as far as building out a little bit of the epoxy stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and close, close that whole group. And honestly, probably everything other than this fragment itself. So inside this fragment, we observe our item entities list live data, which is going to just be the entire uh, list of items that we have in our database. If we take a look at our fragment here, we are just going to have um, an epoxy recycler view as our uh, basically as our layout. So we can. Uh, go ahead and create the necessary controller. I'm going to do the same thing here with uh, loading states. And then we're going to need a list uh, or an item entity list. Okay. And then in our Build models, we will go ahead and just capture our loading states. Otherwise, evaluate if we are in an empty state. And then lastly, here, just iterate over each of our entities and do something with them. So let's go ahead and just create the inner, uh, well, no, I'll just create a data class item entity epoxy model. Okay, so um, a couple of things I actually forgot here, uh, but we needed our helper view binding Kotlin model class here, which was just copy and pasted from a previous season, which we kind of discussed uh, where this comes from, how this works, etc. And um, I believe that was in the season four that we discussed it. Um, but we needed this in order to implement things the way that we would like to, the way that the pattern that we would like to follow. Uh, because of that, we needed to add a little IDs uh, XML file here that just simply has this little information in it so that everything works properly. Um, so I apologize for not having that, but uh, we've gone ahead and created our epoxy controller. We handle, or we have a, a state to handle the loading. We have our entity list, uh, we handle the loading and the uh, empty states, and then we can just go ahead and do the item, empty epoxy model with the item, set the ID to be the item dot ID, and then add to this, right? So pretty standard stuff here for uh, a basic implementation of the epoxy controller. If none of this makes sense to you, you kind of dive into it a bit deeper in season four. So go ahead and get caught up there. I'll probably post a card in the upper right hand corner to help you out finding what you need. Uh, but now we need to actually go ahead and define the layout of what we are going to do here for, um, for, for each item. 
So we're going to set the height to wrap content because, um, you know, we're in a vertical scrolling list. Uh, let's set the padding horizontal here to be 16 dp. Sounds pretty normal. And then, well, let's take a look at our item entity and what we have here to kind of, you know, the data that's going to end up driving this UI here. So we have an ID that's not really going to be surfaced to the user. We have a title, an optional description, the priority level, a created at, which might be pretty important there, and then the category ID. So let me think about this for a little bit. So I've thought about it a little bit and going to go ahead and just uh, modify the layout to what I have in mind and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so we have, or I've come up with something here that should uh, at least get us going here. So we have two text views here that are just set for the title and description. Uh, we have our delete um, image view here that we can go ahead and select. Uh, I guess, you know, remove it from the list essentially. And then um, a little, I don't know, priority thing here or whatever the case is uh, that has a different background color based upon which priority we have it and so we'll be able to kind of uh, you know set that uh, accordingly I'll just go ahead and change that to tools really quickly um, all of this is wrapped inside of a material card view so that's why if we look close enough here or if I can get it Difficult to see, but there can be a stroke and there can be the corner radius. I think default is three, so if we set it to like six, it's gonna appear more rounded. If we quickly set it to 16, you can very easily see how rounded it actually becomes. Uh, so let's go with four for now, see how that kind of looks and how that plays out. And then um, if we wanted to have a stroke as well, uh, we totally could set that, which maybe we will. Maybe that'll set or that'll match the priority color or something along those lines. That could be that could be kind of cool to to theme it. Um, and then, if we go ahead and take a look at where we're using this inside of our epoxy model, we can uh, go ahead and like link this up. So we have a title text view. We can set the text of that to be the item entities. Uh, title we can say if our item entity uh, dot description if it equals null we're going to set our description text views visibility to gone so we can say is gone equals true else we are going to say that is visible is true for the view itself and then the description text view 
uh, dot text is going to be item entity description. Cool. So we optionally hide this uh, this view if we don't have it. So for instance, it would look like that. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a smaller uh, item there. So we'll see. Maybe we'll play around with it. Maybe it doesn't go. Maybe we just set it to invisible. Yeah, if we set it to invisible, the problem is the title looks a little weird. Yeah. We'll see which one's worse in practice when we get into it. But uh, for now, we'll go ahead and just do that. Uh, we have our delete image view. We will set an on click listener to do, we need to delete our item. And then the priority text view set on click listener. We go ahead and say to do, um, no, let's just do this right now. Why not? Uh, let's go ahead and build a, an interface that we're going to use. So we'll make this the item entity interface. Uh, we'll say function delete item entity with the item entity itself. Uh, I like to use the word on to kind of signify an action beforehand. And what was our other one? Oh, on, we're gonna call it bump priority with the particular item entity, right? So if we go ahead and actually enforce this to be a member of our constructor for the controller, we can go ahead and say the item entity interface, blah, blah, blah. And then we could also require that during construction of our uh, epoxy model. And here we can just say the item entity interface. And then at this point we can bubble up our events. So we will call it item entity interface dot on delete with the item entity. And here we can call it item entity interface dot on bump priority with our item entity. So at this point we have everything wired up here. Uh, we don't have a, an empty state at the moment, but um, we're gonna go ahead and cut the video here. We kind of have some things uh, up and running or at least we will have things up and running once we actually have content inside of our database. So um, just going to go ahead and cut the video here because it took me way longer than I thought <laughs> to actually come up with this. Um, it, we might iterate on it. It's really not all that glorious, but for now it's going to accomplish what we need. Um, but we might end up you know, enhancing this as we add more to it, but it took me way longer than I thought and my brain's kind of fried from it. Um, so uh, we are going to leave it here and then in the next episode we will pick up where we left off here and continue our implementation of the uh, epoxy controller and then actually hook everything up back to the fragment level itself and um, we'll go from there. So. I am looking forward to seeing you in in the next